I, I wanted to ask, uh, I, I guess I want to get to the, the, uh, an underlying comment that uh, Carmen made earlier, which I think uh, a lot of us are uh, fully aware of, uh, which is uh, to do with, uh, there's a lot of talk, but not a lot of walk. Um, you're talking about uh, an initiative where you say you want to change the culture uh, of the offices or the, the areas which um, help the small businesses. Um, how do you give us an idea of how that is, how you envision that to, to happen for one. And uh, the, uh, along those lines, um, you say there are a couple of your ideas was, you know, we're gonna build this database and we're gonna build these other um, uh, initiatives, all of which have been there for years. I mean, I've been in a bunch of databases at the small business office for, um, uh, you know, over 10 years and I've never done in a single piece of business with the, with the county because of multiple of the things that I'm, I'm, I'm sure you're aware of. But I'm curious to, to hear what your, how you envision this to happen and how do you declare success for that, for those priorities? Thanks. Great question. Um, well, uh, changing the culture of departments, I think starts at the top. Um, you've got to have department directors who share the vision and work to make it happen. And, you know, I don't think we have that now. Um, and I think we, we could have that if I can attract great people to come in and work at the department and send the word in through all the staff that like, hey, you know, we're solutions oriented. We're helping people get to yes. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to like, punish you if you're trying to do the right thing and you're trying to come up with a solution and you know there's a little friction like I would rather have you um, you know working hard to support and create value for the small businesses than following every you know procedure by the book to the to the you know to the uh, to the last dotting the last I so I think that that is a leadership departmental leadership, driven cultural change that could be obviously manifested with um, different kinds of ways to socialize that through the organization, you know, creating campaigns within the workforce to understand and, and you know, embrace the vision. Um, the, uh, as for the databases and so forth, I think that, you know, your comment that you haven't been able to get, you haven't done had county business despite being in the databases, it could be that that is related more to the initiative that we are looking at around procurement assistance. I mean, has, have you, yes, you've been in a database. Have you had access to the kind of expert help to understand where procurement opportunities really are in the county, at the state and at the federal level? And I think that, you know, that could, I hear that that's an area where we are a little bit, you know, we're coming up short providing with that procurement technical assistance. I would invite Renee, if you'd like to you know, add any comment here. Thank you. I don't know if you, can you hear me? Yes. Am I on? Okay. I don't know if you can see me bursting at the seams, <laughs> but yes, I would love to because um, again, and, and, and not to brag at all, but I'm speaking from what I've seen as success and what has worked before I firmly believe will continue to work. It starts with what Han said, I was before SBDC, I was the head small business person at the Defense Department several years back under the Carter administration. And I reported to the Deputy Secretary of Defense, Charles Duncan of Duncan Hines. I could not have done my job without his full support. But the president had said that he wanted to see minority enterprise improve, and that's when women's business came into its being and it was done. It was mentioned in staff meetings. It became a part of the procurement officers, uh, uh, what is it, your evaluation, employment evaluation. This is the kind of thing that I would like to see repeated in Montgomery County. And Hans and I have talked about this and he is committed. 
That's why we're saying the office should report to him. Nobody else, it should be report to him. So the director of procurement will report to Hans and the director of finance. Um, we were talking about property management. We had a, a, a client who contacted the office. I think he contacted all of the councilmen. She contacted all of the councilmen to say she could not get any uh, attention. She has a property management firm. And the first thing we did was to get in touch with procurement and several different departments were involved and everybody uncovered a lot of information. We saw where some things could have been done better. She ended up being satisfied because now she is quote unquote in the system. She understands how they buy and what she has to prepare for. It really is a matter of priorities and it really is a matter of culture change, not just words, but it has to be done. One last thing, um, I will say, uh, Carmen may remember the Northeast Corridor Improvement Project. Uh, you remember that, Carmen? Yes. That was, that, that was the first, that was the improvement of the railroad lines from be, the, the Northeast Corridors from Boston to DC. Right. And it was the first government contract that had uh, minority business gold and it. it was a 15% gold. And the gentleman who was the head of the Department of Transportation at the time talked to the project manager and said, I want to achieve this 15%. And I was hired by the firm that was hired to make sure that this happened. We succeeded the 15%. And getting minority participation, but again, it was because the minority business office, small and minority business office, was involved in every aspect from requisitions, program requirements. It wasn't just at the last minute when the solicitation hits the street. 